haven't seen my face in a while, so I thought it'd be funny if I made an annoying YouTube reference. It, okay, that's actually, it's really, it's really difficult just making stuff up and just talking out of your, your, your butt, really, when you're strumming chords like that, so... alien ukulele. So I um, wanted to just um, share a bit with you and uh, give a bit of good news to Silver Falls players out there, so people who enjoy the Silver Falls games. So about a week ago I announced that I wouldn't be able to work on the Silver Falls games anymore, and you guys let me know um, that you were upset with that because you really enjoy the Silver Falls games and you want to keep seeing more games and new games. And for anyone that missed it, the series is very difficult to market. And I I knew that from the get-go, from the very beginning developing the series, that it wasn't about marketability. I knew the series was not going to have this big bombastic hook um, that people like to see in horror games. We're conditioned to see these big explosive, you know, look at these horrible, creepy monsters. Look at all this you know, gore, violence, look how scary this is, jump scares, and I knew that Silver Falls was not going to be that, and it could not be that, or it wouldn't be unique, it wouldn't be the interesting series that it is. Um, and so Silver Falls is very much about the story and the characters, and sharing a feeling with the players, and whether or not I have to throw game mechanics under the bus, and I actually have to sacrifice um, portions of the game in order to get that feeling across, to share that very particular specific feeling for the game, um, I always knew that was going to be part of the process, and it was just going to make it difficult to explain to people why they might like the series. I knew it was going to be very difficult to get content creators um, to have a look at the game. And ever since the 3DS and Wii U eShops ended, I've had an extremely difficult time getting content creators to have a look at my games on the Switch. And on the Switch at the moment, the Silver Falls games don't have a hook. So there's so much competition out there, there's so much for content creators to be looking at and focusing on that the Silver Falls series is in a difficult place right now on the Switch. So I announced that I would be working on other games, like for example, for the time being, I'll have to make more mobile games that run ads. These are games that can appeal to all ages, especially, you know, children, um, and not necessarily, Silver Falls is not necessarily made for children. So, um... Just things like that, and I'm not I'm not super happy about that. But this is my day job. It's my business that I run. It's my livelihood. And when it's your day job, you just you have to do what you have to do. And sometimes making you know mobile games, it's may, may not be your favorite thing in the world, but it's just part of your job, and you have to do it. And that's partly why I was kind of irritated uh, by the idea of no longer working on Silver Falls games. And I think that feeling came across to you guys, and you were a little bit upset. So I just want to thank everyone who has reached out to me to let me know that they really care about the Silver Fall series and that you you were disappointed, you want to keep seeing more, that you really are, you know, you, you really enjoy the characters and the story. So here's my good news to you guys. As I was going through my development documents last night, and I found a game that has been in, in development and planning for a few years, and I'll be able to work on that game alongside my current other games. And the reason being is it's a smaller Silver Falls title. It focuses heavily on the story. And so it's something um, that will bring you what you want. It's not a big, huge Silver Falls title, but it's called Silver Falls Puzzle. And it's a puzzle game. But again, it, it focuses more on the story. And I think people will be... Um, people will, will be... Um, happy with the amount of story that they get from this, and it's more Silver Falls, it's more it's more characters, uh, it's more character interactions, uh, and it's what people enjoy from the Silver Falls series. So it's going to be very different from the rest of the series, considering that it is a puzzle game. It's going to be a significantly simpler game, uh, but it will have a frontier mode in it as well, alongside the story mode. So that's what I wanted to share. This is my apology for upsetting people out there who really wanted more Silver Falls games. This is me meeting you halfway. I know that many people are looking forward to the the bigger titles in the series coming up, like Duck Season, Face Takers, and Galaxy Bound Curse DX. But working on my smaller titles, uh, for example, Clasher Ball, which I finished and I'm bringing to other um, 
uh, platforms. I'm working on Gorgeous Sword Long Hard Justice and a few other games as well, and working on those is giving me the opportunity to work on Silver Falls Puzzle, so I'll get that finished pretty quickly. And I don't want to just keep rolling out remasters. I did say that I will bring Undertakers to the Switch. It is ready to launch on the Switch, but I want to add an interesting and exciting game mode so it's worth it for people. And I'm adding what looks like a first-person shooter style mode, but in a very uh, vintage-looking style for the presentation. So I hope you're looking forward to that. It's it's important when you're managing your brand, you need to really take a step back and look at it. And it's not going to be good for the brand's health if I just keep rolling out remaster after remaster. And I don't want to do three masters in a row on the Switch. It's not a good look. It's not good for you guys. It's not good for uh, the image of Silver Falls. And so by rolling out Silver Falls Puzzle, that gives me at least a new title. Um, I didn't want to keep rolling out remasters. It's just, it's not good for a brand's health, so. I just want to take a special moment to especially thank my supporters on Patreon. I'm going to try to go through the list here. I've never done this before. Okay. I want to thank Olivia and Jose Torres, Darius Ladisinski, Jackson Lake, Chris Lawrence, Boris Wright, Bacon, Pizza Pie, which sounds delicious, Kenneth Mashi, Gino Zane, Umerich, Cameron, Bob Barnum, My Hockey, 011, Brennan Goldman, Mitchell Hall, Gloppy, Light, Nick Cameron, Rocky, Unseen Vision, What Is This, Stephen William Kage, Carmen Red. Whoa, I did that all with one breath. And I especially want to thank Olivia and Jose Torres, who just signed up um, within the last week or two. Thank you guys so much for your support. It's because of all of you that I'm able to do this. And our next goal uh, with Patreon, with Patreon, you guys help me keep the lights on in the studio, and I wouldn't be able to do this without you. And I do try to put your contributions to uh, my studio. I try to put them towards something that I can give back to you guys. So the next thing I'm investing in is a flashing hardware so I can create physical Game Gear games. I've recently set up the software development kit for the Game Gear, so I've started learning Game Gear development. Uh, and I would like to make some Game Gear games. Obviously, I will uh, give early access and testing ROMs to the supporters on Patreon, and I will make the ROMs available free when I finish games for the Game Gear, which I'll be doing for the foreseeable future. Uh, and the cartridges, um, again, the Patreon contributions, I will put towards the hardware so I can produce physical cartridges for you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, please take care of yourselves, my fellow humans, and I'll see you around.